Hello everybody, this is the Johnny Mare, and welcome to my final episode of Resident Evil 1 Jill Scenario. Disregard knowing alarm in the background and come with me as we head towards the end of this game. All we have to do is escape this underground laboratory. Or laboratory, if you will. And the zombies in this area out here are actually changed to skitters, so kill it! Okay. Whew. So we need to save Chris, and that's so we can get the best ending in the game. So let's hang a left here. If you remember my last episode, I showed you that by using those last two passcodes, you can open up this door at the end of the hall. So let's enter those codes. And down these steps we will find the cell of Chris and now that the emergency system is activated if you remember way back a couple episodes ago we saw a sign that said all electronic locks will be opened in the case of an emergency. So that has opened up the cell door. And now we get to see the emotional reunion of Chris and Jill. <laughs> oh Jill! Oh Chris! So you're okay! Yeah! You too! <laughs> what happened to Wesker? Let's talk about it later. Let's get out of here! <laughs> like how she's just like a wave with, Hey! <laughs> uh, in the remake version for GameCube, they actually have a pretty emotional embrace there, but uh, no dice in this version of the game. So Chris will be following us around like a little puppy. And uh, we don't have to worry about his safety because they take care of that right now. By making him run ahead. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Guess you're a little uh, energetic there after being locked in a cell for so long. Now there's another skitter out here as I like to call them. So let's see if we can get around this corner real quick and avoid it. Uh, oh. And uh, the zombies at the top of the stairs actually have respawned as well. So they get to say hello to my little friend Colt Python. Bam! Don't worry, I'll let you say hi. And one more. Ugh. <laughs> Man, Magnum is awesome. Too bad you can't start the game with it and have, you know, something like infinite ammo. That would be cool. Let's go. Like I'm the one that's falling behind. You were in a freaking cell and I had to save you, meathead. Yes, climb up the ladder. And it looked like Chris actually had a magnum there. So I'm not exactly sure where everyone's getting magnums from, but uh, apparently Umbrella's just dispensing them. Hey, Barry's along too. So we got these two guys watching our back. What could possibly go wrong? Nothing, that's what I say. This is the door that opened up now that the emergency system is activated. Hmm. I like how both Chris and Barry there looked at the ceiling while Brad was talking. Come on, tank controls. While Brad was talking. Oh, that was silly. So here's a battery and a very, very, very stupid puzzle. So you need to go five feet from where this battery is located and put it in this slot here. And I guess the reason they did this is because you need to have an open slot in your inventory in order to finish the game. So this is forcing you to have an open slot. Uh-oh. What is that? Oh no, you must be kidding. After you come all the way here. Ladies first. Go first, Jill. But Chris. Give me a chance to play nice. Okay, I'll leave it up to you. See you get at the helicopter. I think they can handle it. Two guys with two magnums. I'm not sure much can stand up to that. And you'll notice we do now have a time limit. Three minutes till explosion. So we're gonna have to make this quick up here on the helipad. 
Not that we have to do much. We just have to alert the helicopter that we're ready to go. And then we'll get out of here. You'll notice this box over here of flares. Grab one. And head out to the middle of the helipad. Shoot it off. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Kind of looked like it was going to hit her in the face. That would have sucked. All right. And here comes the helicopter. Looks like this long journey is finally over. We've faced many obstacles, beasties, and difficult situations, but we've come out of it okay. So let's go. What the? Oh man. Tyrant, round two. Fight. Run away. Ugh. So try to dodge his big slashes and you have to shoot him five or six times with your magnum. So keep running a little bit away. Run, run, run. Ugh. And try to avoid his uh, left side. Because obviously that's the side with the big claw on it. So don't be dumb like me. So now with the Amazon, ugh, you have to get to that rocket launcher. Pick it up. Oh yeah. Now we're talking firepower. Four shots for some reason. That's uh, kind of excess because all it takes is one. Boom! I like how he looked up at the helicopter at the last second there. Okay. So long, Tyrant. And so long, Umbrella. I have a feeling this is the end of the Umbrella Corporation and we'll never hear from them again. Actually, we will. Jeez. That would be uh, the ultimate ending with Brad crashing the helicopter into the helipad. And now we get our cinematic ending. And uh, this is the good ending as it's called. Because we did save Chris. Goodbye mansion. Aww. Not sure why Jill's hair is blonde on her actress, but brown in the game. But whatever, we're heading off into the sunset. Mission accomplished. And now we get to hear the awesome credits music. <laughs> uh, Gregory, the voice of Barry Burton, great job. Legendary voice actor. Not sure why they didn't have their last names included. It's as if they weren't proud of their performances or something. So as you see during the credits here we get some snippets of scenes back from throughout the game and obviously they're scenario dependent so with Jill we're gonna get all the Jill scenes and the guy playing the game during these is very daring because look he just stands yawn down. Man. So anyway that is about it for Jill's scenario. There's a couple little extra things that I'm going to show you once this is over, but for the most part, that's about it. This has been a really awesome ride. I've had a lot of fun with this game, and I hope you've all enjoyed it. I did ask for some feedback from all of you about whether or not you wanted me to transition direct- Hunter! Yeah, Barry. Transition directly into Chris's scenario, or start with another game and kind of Jeez, never thought to shoot up at those guys. Have a game kind of serve, <laughs> serve as a filter 
in between the two before I start Chris's scenario. And uh, most of the feedback I got was to try a different game in between. So with that in mind, I'm going to be starting up a brand new Let's pay Play within the next couple of days. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Say hello to my little friend again. Resident Evil. So what's our final time? Ah, a little over three and a half hours, not bad. And uh, this ending screen here again, I think is the good one. Because there's one where she's like standing on a balcony in her uniform or something like that. And uh, we get the closet key. Now there's a couple other extra items you can get for finishing the game on a certain amount of time, saves, etc. I think you can get an infinite ammo magnum maybe, and also a rocket launcher perhaps. I've uh, never actually done that, but what you need to do is start over with a uh, cleared game, as you can see from here. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you what that closet key can do. So if you remember back to the mansion downstairs near the uh, grand staircase There was a little room off of the main area that you could access with the armory key or armor key And in that room was a little bit of a drawing room And then there was a closet with a locked door. We couldn't access well now. We have the closet key Yes, we don't need this anymore So head on in, and you're going to find quite a bit of clothes. However, only one outfit actually fits Jill. Now, Some of the later Resident Evils give you a couple different outfits that you can try on, but poor Jill just has one. So let's give it a look. And this reminds me of Final Fantasy VII also, the uh, wall market when Cloud's getting dressed up. Ooh, there's a big zip. So what's she gonna wear? Maybe some tactical body armor to protect her from the uh, zombies? That's probably it. That seems reasonable. <laughs> nope. A skanky low-cut halter top and skin-tight jeans. Well, good on you, Jill. That's the way to face the zombie apocalypse. So let's see her in action. I left this zombie alive out here just so I could kill it off with her new outfit. And this gun. <laughs> She's nothing if not fashionable, I guess. Now, there's actually a little uh, secret, sort of, where if you shoot up at the camera and get it right at the correct angle, I'm going to try to figure this out. So I think I found the angle here, but if you shoot at the camera, bam, see, you get little bullet holes that appear. Cool. And so we will finish off this Let's Play by showing you the bad ending. So this is the ending that you get if you do not save Chris. Pretty much the same, but a little bit of a difference. So, see if you can pick out the difference. And as always, I want to say thank you to everyone for watching, and I will see you all in my next Let's Play coming soon. So long. Still be alive.